guys, welcome to today's video. This video is my breastfeeding journey. I first of all want to start off by saying that I am not someone who is certified, so anything I say in this video is my experience and is not something that if I say something that works for me, it may not work for everybody. So to start, I am pumping right now. My daughter is uh, taking a nap and I gave her a bottle earlier, so sorry about the noise in the background, but I have to pump, so. I wanna start by saying that my breastfeeding journey started off pretty rocky and it has gotten a lot better. So I am three and a half months postpartum, so I thought this would be a good idea to, to create this video because I have had a lot that has gone wrong and it ended up okay. So to start, I wanna say that I had a C-section and I stayed in a German hospital because I do not live in the United States. So that whole experience was a lot different. That whole experience was a lot different than it would be in the United States and I think that has a lot to do with why um, some of the things that happened did happen. I didn't have much knowledge of breastfeeding before I went into having a baby. I didn't research anything. I didn't I didn't I didn't do anything to prepare. The only things I knew was I was going to need like simple things which I did like order on Amazon and I'm glad that I did do that because I was prepared for breastfeeding, but I was not mentally prepared for how, for how hard it is because I went through so much trying to breastfeed and it put a mental it put like a mental strain on me and my relationship and everything that happened in my life it was just really difficult and if something like that happens to you guys just know if you give up there is not a problem with that if it is too much of a stressor for you there's no shame in giving up in formula feeding there's nothing wrong with formula at all and that being said i did give my baby formula supplementing which I should not have done but I did so let's start with day one trying to get a latch um, trying to get a latch was really difficult and I think part of this was because the hospital did give my daughter a pacifier I didn't know anything about pacifiers and how that can affect a latch on day one so I didn't oppose to it also um, when I went into recovery after my c-section the first thing they gave her was a bottle of formula because I was gone for three hours um, usually it's supposed to be an hour and during that three hours I hadn't even gotten to hold her yet so we didn't we didn't have any type of bonding or even try to get a latch at that point so I think that affected the fact that I couldn't get a latch later because we didn't we didn't get skin to skin like you're supposed to in the beginning if you want to hear my birth story, comment down below and I will tell you what happened at the hospital and I think that has a lot to do with why I did have such a hard time. Since we did supplement on day one, uh, I guess I wasn't opposed to doing it for the rest of the days there either. So every time she would cry and I couldn't get her to latch, a nurse might ask me, hey, do you want a bottle of formula? So, so the, Because I was stressing out and they knew I was stressing out about it and she continuously would cry and cry and cry and the nurses would help me by giving me a pump to try to get milk to come out, colostrum at that point, and not much was coming out. And what I also did not know is how tiny their bellies are. They're, they don't need that much. They don't need really to supplement. They do not need formula. It might not even be the fact that they're crying because they're hungry. They're, they just come out of the womb. It's a whole new world to them. Their tummies are so little, they, they're they cluster feeding at that point, and, the, and that's how it should be. They should not, giving formula is fine, like I previously said, but if you don't want to do that, you shouldn't have to in the beginning because of how little their bellies are. The first week home, we had people stay here, like family, and I think that had a lot to do with uh, why things did go the way they went. So since we had family staying, I was already stressing out about that, and I didn't really want her to see that I was stressing stressing so much about it so I would supplement at home during that first week and instead of letting the baby cluster feed like it should be uh, I just kept supplementing and when she left I was still trying to just solely breastfeed that it just took so long for my milk to come in since it hadn't come in while she was there and the first couple of weeks 
I was struggling. I had also had a hard time with my husband because he wasn't as supportive as he could have been, but that's because he didn't have the knowledge as well. So since I didn't have the knowledge to tell him, he also didn't have the knowledge to support the fact that I didn't want to give her formula. I wanted to solely breastfeed. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if neither of you are knowledgeable about breastfeeding, then this is what happens. So that definitely took a big toll on me trying to build up a supply and get enough breast milk to where I can solely breastfeed. Since I was trying not to be so stressed out with that and my relationship at the same time, that did make a big impact. So the first month of her being home, she was basically being breastfed and a little bit of formula. And at this point I was trying my hardest to research on how to fix the problem. And my, my doctor told me that everything seemed like it was fine since she was gaining weight, but I also wasn't able to feel comfortable at home since she was constantly crying and cluster feeding, like non-stop all the time for the first month. And par partially it was because of the formula that we had been giving her. And she wasn't used to that, to not getting it when I was trying to solely breastfeed. Once I started doing research and learning what I was doing wrong, I did stop giving her formula and just breastfeeding. And this took a while for uh, before, before my milk came in, but eventually it did come in the way it was supposed to. I just had to make sure that she was getting on the breast more. I also ordered a bunch of supplement, supplements at this point. And honestly, if you're, if you're that early on in, you don't need to get supplements. You're, if your milk hasn't come in yet, like mine hadn't yet, which it should have, uh, supplements are not going to help. <laughs> so I ordered brewer's yeast, I ordered lactation teas, and I made lactation brownies and cookies. I actually, I overdid it. So I ended up getting fenugreek, and I also ended up getting goat's root tablets. So I did this because I thought it would help, but really I had just wasted a bunch of money on a bunch of things I didn't really need. So I ended up at, at after a few weeks I ended up solely using sunflower lecithin from Legendary Milk and I also used Goat's Roo from Mommy Knows Best. Those two brands, um, I feel like those two things did help me. The sunflower lecithin was just for thinning out your milk so that you don't get clogged ducts, which I know might be useful to get more milk out at once, which is why I bought that. And I did notice a difference with that, so I will say that really did help. But the goat's roux I ordered because uh, goat's roux helps grow mammary glands. It might not work for everybody, but I did buy it because of that. It helps with that. And that helps you produce more milk. So those two things I still take, but I really only take the goat's roux because I'm afraid that it does help and I'm not sure how much it helps. If I stop it, then I'm afraid my milk supply is going to drop because I'm used to taking it every day. And I am three and a half months postpartum, so I have been weaning myself off of it a little bit, so I've been taking less and less. I haven't noticed too much of a difference, so I'm thinking that I really don't need it. So during month two, my milk supply had actually came in like really, really good. And this is partially because uh, by month, by one and a half months, I was pumping in the morning and at night at least to get like extra milk. It would be like an extra feeding. My boobs would think that the baby is on there again so that I could try to get more milk out and they would empty again. After doing that, I ended up building up a really large stash which I really definitely do not need that much. I am glad though that I have that much milk because with the coronavirus going on people are out there buying formula like crazy and what if something happened and I actually needed to buy formula I wouldn't be able to so I am glad that I have a really large stash but at this point me being three and a half months postpartum this week I actually stopped pumping as much so I really just pump in the morning after she wakes up after uh, I feed her and sometimes I pump at night if I feel really full and she's already been asleep but it's rare that I even do that anymore so before I was pumping in the morning in between like three and six o'clock to build up my stash because that 
that is perfect timing to build a stash if you need to because you're making more milk in the middle of the night. And now I just wait until around 8 o'clock after I've already fed her and I still get a couple ounces. Since I don't need as much, since my stash is already pretty big, I really don't worry about it anymore. So what also made all of this so stressful for me and why they tell you not to stress out when you're breastfeeding is because I was worrying about other things too. So that could have been what had decreased me being able to produce as much. So I was in two classes when I first had her. I am in college currently and I was taking two college courses at the same time when I had just given birth to a baby. It was really, really hard to do. And then after that, in the second month, I believe it was the second month, I just started taking three classes at once. And that really put like a toll on me too. So with all of those things going on and me trying to breastfeed and still trying to recover from a c-section it was just so stressful that i believe all of these factors factors really affected my supply at some point i realized that none of it was worth stressing about so i stopped stressing so much and i started making more milk i stopped worrying if she was getting enough because even if she seemed fussy sometimes I knew that I had already started making enough milk for her after my milk came in good enough and I can pump extra so now I'm able to maintain a stash and also not worry about um, whether she's getting enough or not. My breastfeeding journey was really difficult in the beginning but after I realized not to stress about it everything just fell into place. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it helped some of you mamas to be or current mothers that are struggling with breastfeeding journeys. I hope this helps you realize that you shouldn't stress as much if you are stressing about it. Stop researching things on the internet and just ask somebody. Ask somebody. Ask somebody who is certified. If you really think that there's something wrong, don't go and research it online. Just ask somebody. It can help you not waste money and that is the biggest thing I took away from this because I wasted so much money that I really didn't need to waste on breastfeeding stuff. And also, if you're going to supplement, just realize what comes with that. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did like this, please subscribe. Also, hit the thumbs up button. I hope you guys watch my next videos.